Katie was killed October 6th, uh, 2017. And, uh, you know, she was 37 years old. She was a young mom with, uh, you know, twins that weren't even two months old. They'd never been home. They were still in the NICU in UCLA. She was on her way back from the hospital. And that, that was the irony, right? That the, uh, the doctors had told us that these girls uh, weren't gonna make it. They told us that uh, they weren't gonna live. Uh, they actually encouraged us to abort the babies. They didn't, I mean, they were born three and a half months early. Uh, so they were, they were, you know, less than just than one pound. You could just feel them and couldn't even fit up one hand. I could put my wedding ring, this wedding ring, I could put all the way up to their elbow. Wow. Uh, so really, really tiny. So these little girls who we thought weren't going to make it, the doctor said weren't going to make it, they're thriving. They're doing great right now. And they got little graduation uh, certificates from the doctors recently because they, they don't need any more preemie checkups. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, Katie, who should have had a full and rich life, you know, she's not here anymore. And it's because somebody made the decision to, to drive drunk. And, you know, even though Katie hadn't had any alcohol, you know, that, that drinking and driving killed her. Yeah, so the, the girls were really, really young and they didn't know what was going on. I, I have four uh, older boys. Uh, three of them were, you know, sig significantly older. They still remember their mom. They were ages uh, 12 down to nine. Uh, Spencer, Travis, and, and Nathaniel. And uh, then I had a two-year-old. Uh, he wasn't quite two and a half when Katie died. And, uh, you know, we have great pictures of them together and some good videos and things, but, uh, you know, he's not gonna remember her either, unfortunately. Uh, you know, when I told them, I, I didn't tell the two-year-old. He, um, he was young enough that we, we thought we would just kind of give him a little extra time. But I, I you know, that morning as the boys uh, came down, stairs, uh, you know, I had some friends over and uh, bless their hearts, they didn't think anything of it. We just uh, made them a nice breakfast and they had a good breakfast. And, and then, uh, you know, I, I sat them down and, and I, I told them that their mom wasn't gonna be coming home. And, you know, it was like someone had canceled Christmas for all eternity, you know, just uh, they cried their little hearts out and, you know, we gave them, we gave them hugs and uh, I mean, that's all we could do, right? What else can you do? Um, so my, my second son, Travis, he was really uh, the one who was impacted the most by, by Katie's death. She, um, she and he were really you know, close and uh, he, re he really struggled. You know, his confidence took a hit. He had an, an identity crisis uh, to some extent. And I mean, we, we had him in counseling to try and help him. But you know, ultimately, um, you know, the, the only things that really kind of got him through were you know, some really good friends who uh, were there for him. And, uh, you know, he does have a new stepmom who's who's trying to do her best to kind of be there for him. And, you know, it's it's not the same, uh, but it's definitely helped. And and I, I really, uh, I, I love her for her and I love her for doing that for the kids too. If me talking to you guys will keep one person from getting killed by a drunk driver, that life saved makes all my time, all my sharing these personal feelings uh, in a way that, uh, you know, isn't entirely comfortable it makes it all worthwhile because I don't want anyone else to have to go through what I went through.